For loops in Python make things so much easier, but do you really know how they work under the hood? In today's video, I'm going to show you that, and we're also going to talk about iterators. So first of all, this video is not about how to use the for loop, okay? For that, I already have another video, okay? So let's say we have a tuple, a simple tuple like, like that, okay? And this tuple is a sequence, okay? Like lists, strings, etc. And this is also an iterable, okay? Which means it can return its elements one at a time, okay? Which is what you do with a for loop, basically, okay? A dictionary is also an iterable, even though it's not a sequence, but it's a mapping type, okay? So if you pass this iterable to a function iter, I-T-E-R, you get an iterator, okay? Let's actually see what I mean. So my iterator, iter, like that, my tuple, okay? And then we print my iterator, okay? So if we run the code, you can see you get a tuple iterator object. Okay, of course, this would be a list iterator for a list, string iterator for a string, and dictionary key iterator for a dictionary, etc., etc. Okay, so an iterator is basically an object that represents a stream of data and it's used to go through an iterable one element at a time. Okay, but how can you do that? With the method next underscore underscore next of the iterator object. Okay, so if you call something like, let's actually comment this out, if you call something like, my iterator, underscore, underscore, next, underscore, underscore, like that, okay? And we call it, let's like, say, four times. You can see you get one, two, three, four, okay? Because we called it four times. So every call to next, we return the next element in the, in the sequence, okay? We can actually use the next built-in function, and I'll show you that later, okay? But how can we understand when we reach the last element, okay? Because in this case, you don't know when you actually reach the last element. This is simple because Python will raise a stop iteration error, okay, when there are no more elements left in the sequence. Let's actually see that. So we've got five elements and now we've got six calls, okay? So as you can see, you get this element, this error, stop iteration, okay? Which basically means you don't have any more elements. After five, you don't have any more elements. If here we actually use the next function, okay, the built-in next function, like this. So this is the built-in next function. You do the same thing and you call it like that, okay? Instead of calling this, you call next like that. And here you have the same result because actually this function calls next, the underscore underscore next method behind the scenes. But you can also provide a second argument, which, if provided, is returned instead of raising the exception. Okay, so if you provide something like no more items, something like that, and let's actually do the same thing here, like that. So you've got six calls, and you've got only five elements in the in the tuple. If you do that, as you can see, one, two, three, four, five, no more items. Okay, so when you call this function and you don't have any items left, then the default value, okay, no more items is used, okay? But of course, we're going to stick to the next, the underscore underscore next underscore underscore method in this case, but I just wanted to mention this, okay? So let's actually delete this like that, perfect. Let's actually delete these and keep one of those like that. I'm actually going to cut it like that, okay? So, as I said, when we don't have any more elements left, Python raises a stop iteration error. So we need to handle that so that the program won't crash. I actually made a video on exception handling. So if you're interested in learning more about that, you know that I have that on my channel. Okay, so I need to do something like try, and then you can call it, let's call it six times. Okay, and then say pass. Okay, so basically now, we are handling the exception. We can actually do something like stop iteration here, okay? Because we need to handle only this exception. If you run that, you can see you don't get an error anymore. So you get one, two, three, four, five. You're here. You try to run this. This raises the stop iteration exception. So instead of 
crashing the program, you, you just pass or you could do whatever here. I just passed. Okay. Because this is just an example. Okay. So of course here I had to write the next call one by one. Okay. And, and it doesn't make sense because you never know how many items you have. When you use a for loop, you don't know you've got, if you've got 10 items, 100 items, etc., etc. So when you do something like put element in my tuple, for example, and then you print the element, Python does basically this under the hood. Okay. It does something like this. But before you look at that, let me know in the comment section down below if you're finding this video helpful and interesting. I really love your feedbacks. So let's actually copy the tuple so you can see that better down here. Okay, it does something like that. He creates a temporary iterator, which I'm going to call temp iterator, my tuple. Okay, perfect. Then it does something like while true, try, okay, element, temp iterator, next, okay, except stop iteration, break. And then down here, you print the element. So basically, you keep looping and looping, you try to get the, the next element, if you've got it, then you assign it to the element here, okay? And then you print, so basically this print here is the same as this print here, okay? So if you do like that, if you've got this print element is the same, and this whole thing here is this basically. You get the element, okay? So you get the element, you use the element down here, you go through that, and then when you don't have any more elements left because you get the stop duration error, then you break out of the loop and you keep going down here, okay? So this is basically what the for loop does under the hood, okay? And in fact, if we try that, let's actually see, let's actually comment this out like that, okay? So as you can see, you've got one, two, three, four, five. This is the actual for loop. And this is a sort of custom made for loop with a while true loop like here. Okay. So basically we've just recreated the functionality of a for loop. How cool is that? Okay. Of course, all of this is done by Python behind the scenes. So we don't need to worry about it, but at least now you know how the for loop actually works. Okay. So after this really interesting video, I bet you want to keep learning. So what are you waiting for? Click on this other interesting video about Python and I'll see you there.